Um, first, I'm going to show you my studio, just to get a little sense of what I do. I weave on this digital loom here. It's a hand weaving process. And um, I'm working with uh, faces right now. Um, but um, these are five of the main things that I'm interested in my work, but I'm only going to talk about the last two. Um, I'm very interested in touch and emotion and how looking at the art or looking at my work um, creates an emotional state that's different than if it was just a photograph. And then also the kind of research I've done with neuroscience. So this is, uh, this is just a couple of early pieces um, that have to do with touch. And I'm not going to tell you how things are made. You can ask me afterwards, but it's complex. So. And um, this is a draped piece. Um, again, this comes from, I did a lot of videos where I was touching, touching my hands and um, so forth. And then it's woven and draped. What's yeah. the sound? I think it's because your mic and the, this, yeah, this next to the mic on the computer. Okay. All right. All right. All right. So uh, one of the uh, things about these woven faces is when you see them at a distance, they just look like a photograph. But as you move closer to them, they dissolve into pattern, and then eventually you see that they're woven. Mm -hmm. And what I've experienced, uh, I had a traveling show, was that people became very emotional about the work, uh, especially once they saw that it was woven. And I, uh, they would feed this back to me. And so I began to get sort of curious about that. I'm showing you a couple of large pieces. And these are all woven. But in this traveling show, I had a number of faces and uh, even had doll faces. And that really freaked out some people. <laughs> <laughs> So, but, but it just seemed like it was so much more intense. And my theory about it is that, that when you realize that it's woven, it connects to something else in your brain, something that has to do with touch and emotion. And uh, also, the other thing is, uh, when uh, people see this work, they want to touch it. They may want to touch a painting, but they really want to touch the weaving, and they feel they're entitled to it. <laughs> so it creates a real tension. And I'll show you in one of the later experiments I did, we, we actually had people touch the art. So this was the other thing. Um, this is the same photograph, well, translated through weaving in different ways. And I was showing this piece, and people kept saying, it's not the same photograph. That one's sad, that one's angry. And they would tell me about the emotions. So uh, that was another thing that I was, you know, getting feedback about. So this is a close-up of a, of a couple of them. And um, so in this, this is a series I'm doing uh, of which um, I'm taking that single image, uh, and it's of me as a child, and uh, weaving it, translating it differently. Right now there's 15, but eventually there's going to be a wall. So this is, I brought a couple of these today to show you. So, you can see this. Yeah. so uh, anyway, with that kind of feedback, I decided that I wanted to connect with some neuroscientists to see if I was right about this touch thing and emotion. So the first thing I did is I had an artist in residency at the University of Pittsburgh School of Med Medicine with Greg Siegel. And he basically brings in an artist and turns his lab over to you for about a week. And you can do what you want. So it's pretty amazing. So we did, this is eye tracking. I brought all this artwork. We compared a photo with a weaving, with a photo of a weaving. Uh, so we did eye tracking. We did EEG. And then we did fMRI. And I was very excited to find out um, that we in fact found some difference when comparing a picture of the weave with just the straight photograph. And we found more activation in the insula and amygdala and then the visual, uh, other, other activations looking at the photograph. This is just another uh, 
video of the same thing. So to me, that was very exciting, and I wanted to do a real study. I have yet to do a real study, because it costs a lot of money. But I'm still trying to get uh, somebody to do a real study in that. <coughs> so this, uh, I'm just going to show you a tiny bit of this video. I, I make process videos when I'm involved in these artist in residence things. And um, so sometimes I do some work that's based on the <coughs> process. So I'll just show you this a little bit. That's an EEG helmet on the, on the subject. And that's the brain waves that are being recorded. And I'm not going to show you the whole thing, but I want to show you the next thing. So we have him moving and actually touching the artwork and uh, recording his brain waves as he's doing that. So, um, and this is eye tracking, so I'm going to move on. <coughs> I think I'm moving on. There we go. Okay, so this is a piece of mine that was inspired by that process. So, uh, and so it's <coughs> really going to be and these are, you know, about six, eight feet tall. So they're large, yeah. And again, this is from the same one. So one of the things I did uh, is, this is a show that had a lot of my work in it. Um, and within the show, I create these behavioral studies. So it's called the Woven Faces Project. <coughs> and I have two rooms with a different image in each room. I mean, it's, it, one's woven, one's photograph, but it's the same image. And then uh, we had, people, you can see what the two images are here. And people answered all kinds of questions. They also did some free form writing. <coughs> Again, um, some of it's been analyzed, but I have 800 <laughs> things, and so I have to do a lot more of the analyzing. But this was just, uh, a, uh, we did positivity ratings and intensity ratings. So on the left-hand side, you see the weaving. So each line is supposed to represent a person. Well, there are 400 in this one, but <laughs> anyway. Uh, so if they rated the, the weaving in terms of positivity a 10, they might have rated the uh, photo a 5 or something. So I also used some of the data visualization as part of my work, too. And that, I've gotten very interested in that, too, and want to do more with the data visualization. So this is the image that they were looking at, the weaving and weaving on one side, and the weaving of the photo on the other side, and the uh, tracks. And this is another variation. This was uh, positivity, I think. And uh, this is a last variation of that. So I also did a, a study with, um, collaborative with uh, the Schiller Lab at Sinai in New York. She did actual tests. One of the things she does, she's an emotion researcher, is she shocks people. So <laughs> I tried the shocks, it was okay. But <laughs> so she shocked people in relationship to the photos and, and, and scrambles and uh, weavings and um, then de-shocked them. So the only thing they really found out about this is that it took a much longer time for, uh, it's called late extinction, to get rid of the shock from the weaving. She also did very quick looks, which bothered me, because I feel like with the art and with the woven, you need to have time to experience it. So, you know, one little tiny second or half a second doesn't really do it. But anyway, you know, it's collaborative, so they did it the way they wanted, and they paid for the study. So, mm -hmm. so I also did this thing uh, with mirrors, infrared, and... This was within an exhibition itself. Um, what, this was more to, um, for the public. So they got to put on this mirrors thing that measured their blood flow here at the top, front. And then they walked around and looked at the work. And then their, their, the activity in their brain was being projected on the wall in real time. So it was, it was you know, fun. <laughs> but it wasn't, you know, again, real science. But. It's, you know, the, the scientists are really interested in getting the public interest, interested in it. So this is one of the things that they did in the exhibit. This is the guy.
Okay, so this is another exhibit, and I did a different study in this exhibit. This is in Madison. We were talking about Madison earlier. Uh, I collaborated with a neuroscientist, psychologist, psychiatrist, dean of the business school. And uh, we, were, we were very interested. So we did the Woven Faces project, but a different version of it. Uh, we had three booths with three separate images, which were rotated and so forth. Uh, one, we were asked to look at a distance, one close up, and the last one, we were asked to, to have them touch the art. We wanted, to, that's what we wanted. We wanted to see what happened if they were actually allowed to touch the heart, art. And they had questionnaires. I wanted video, surveillance video, but it didn't really work out. But that, that would have been more interesting in a way to see. But these are some of the results. So if they're allowed to touch it, um, more connected when they're allowed to touch. She told me an interesting thing though. She said, um, when people in stores are allowed to touch an object like perfume, they're less likely to buy it, oh. but they're more likely to buy something else in the store, which I thought was really interesting. Anyway, it was, it was fun to do this and uh, got a little bit of information. Um, So the last thing I want to talk to you about is this diffusion spectrum imaging. And this is like a little video showing it. So what this is, is this is something that happens uh, as an artist. It, I didn't intend for this to happen. I didn't intend to be weaving brains and you know, neural connections in the brain. But I happened to see a lecture uh, using this diffusion spectrum imaging, which is a very, very, very detailed MRI, structural MRI, uh, and the fibers in the brain look like a weaving. So I just like, that looked like a weaving. I want to find out how to do it. So the software comes from Harvard, and it's free for academics, so I got it. That's my, the fiber, the, in the, the fiber, they call them fiber tracks but they're the neuron connections in the white matter of your brain. And then I did some work based on that. So this is you know, about eight feet tall, and I'm using my brain fibers and my photograph as a child. And so I did a series of those. Um, this is called Mona Lia. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm trying, I want to do other people. I do have, you have to have somebody who's not a patient who's had their brain scan. So I'm going to be do. I have a, I have a neuroscientist that I've got all the data on because I'm getting a little tired of doing myself. But <laughs> I have to be, you know, if it's my brain fibers, I, it's got to be my face. So these are just some of the pieces that I did. And the last thing I want to show you is this video. Oh, wait a minute. So it's, a, it's the very last thing, so I, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to open it up on the desktop because it doesn't want to play. So, um, Yeah, we just have to. 
Yeah, yeah, there was one more piece I had at the end. Uh, so I've taken frames from this video and rewoven them too. So I'm using that again, like I keep recycling and rebuilding on stuff. So that's it. Yeah. Exactly. 